Let's take a moment to discuss the whole concept of the audio I.O. setup in Studio One, and more specifically, customizing the I.O. for your interface. Now, before we go too far along, it's worth mentioning that within the templates available when you select new song, if we click the Interfaces tab, we have options for all of the interfaces that Personas make. So for example, with respect to this series, I have the Quantum, Quantum 2, Studio 192, and then we also have the Studio 192 Mobile. Now, for the sake of this video, I'm going to be using the Quantum, but it's worth mentioning that this applies to any audio interface with the current audio I.O. setup in Studio One. So this is one option we have. We could simply select one of the presets that fit the audio interface that we're using. Now, in my particular case, I'm using the Quantum right now. So let's go ahead, we'll select the Quantum preset. I'm gonna go ahead and just change this to 48. Let's just put this on my desktop for now and let's go ahead and click OK. All right, so now you can see that we have a session that's been brought up, brand new session. We have some tracks that are hidden here. Let's just go ahead and bring them all in. And these tracks come in record enabled and also with monitoring engaged. But you can see that we have literally a track for every input. Let's go ahead and open up our audio I.O. setup. It's very easy to do. We can do it essentially from, well, numerous different places, but one way that we could do it is by simply clicking in the input section on a track in the console, and then we have the audio I.O. setup in there. The other way that we can do it, the way that I like to do it most of the time, is we can click this audio I.O. setup tab, which is available in the top left of the console. Another way that we can do it is if we have our tracks expanded over here, right where we have the section for your record input where we would select that. If we select this drop down menu, go to the very bottom, we have it here as well. Now we can also access it from our preferences. I'm on a Mac over here, audio setup in the audio device tab, the very bottom we have song setup. So you can see here, like I mentioned, they have an input set up for every single input that's reported by the driver. Now on the output side, they've also set up some outputs over here. We have our main out set up and we also have various outputs in terms of our headphones and our analog line outs and our spit of line out. So let's back up to the inputs for a second over here. Anything that's on the top over here, this is the names that are reported to Studio One by the driver. So let me just go ahead and let's just open up our audio MIDI setup. Like I mentioned, I'm on a Mac over here. And let's take a look at the quantum. We can see we have all these names over here. So these are the names that show up. This is our outputs and this is our inputs over here. These are the names that show up in Studio One on the top here for the inputs and the outputs. Anything on the left side here is custom names that we can add in Studio One. So that's just something to keep in mind. So this is one way that we can start a session and then you could customize that further or you could just work with that. The thing that I like to do is as opposed to opening up a template, I actually like to make my own. So I have a session that I've opened up over here. Let's just open up our audio IO setup. In the output section, you can see that I have my outputs enabled. I have essentially all of the stereo outs enabled that are available in my system. Now I have HP1, HP2, and also my analog lineout 7 and 8, which is connected to a Personas HP4. I have these enabled as a QMix by default. And the reason for that is so that they show up in my Studio One console and I can quickly create headphone mixes if I need to. Now let's head over to the inputs tab over here. You'll notice I've left this blank. Well, actually I've deleted it so that we can go over how to add things. So pretty simple. We can add either a mono channel or a stereo channel, and then we can map them out in this matrix over here. So let's go ahead. We have 27 tracks in total that we can access on the quantum. So let's go ahead and add all 27. Okay, I think that's 27. Yep, correct. Now, as I mentioned, we have the names reported by the driver. And then on this side, we have the custom name. So I can give these a custom name if I wanted it to show up as a custom name. Before we leave this screen over here, let's talk about two things. First of all, anytime that we add mono channels or stereo channels, in order for things to take effect, 
we have to click the apply button. When we click the apply button, I want you to keep your eye on these blue M's, which stand for mono, and all of these channels here, which are kind of written in a gray sort of writing. Let's go ahead and click apply. Everything brightens up. Now we know that those have been created and those are gonna stick. So let's go ahead just for a second here and click okay. Now, if we go into our console, you'll notice that if I click the inputs, have all these channels selected. Like I mentioned, the names on the right are the names as reported by the driver, and the names on the left are the custom names that Studio One created. Let's go ahead and just open up our audio I.O. setup again, and let's talk about a couple different things in terms of customizing the naming structure. Well, one thing that we can do is quite simply just double click over here. Now I have some Presonus preamps that are hooked up to my system. So let's say I have my RC500, which is gonna go into track three, and then track four, we'll say that's going to be my ADL700, and then we have input five and six. I want that to be my ADL600 left and right. So on this one, we'll say ADL600, and in brackets, we can put left, and on this one, we'll say ADL600, and in brackets, we'll put right. Now, just another thing to mention here, I like to have things numerically making sense in terms of input one is input one, input two is input two. So you can see we have this kind of X, Y axis that we can map out. If I wanted to change things up, I could basically reorder them if I wanted to. So I could say I want input one to be input two, and I want input two to be input one. So I've essentially just reverse this order. So it is possible to customize things in terms of how they appear. But for me, that just gets a little bit confusing. So I like to leave things numerically in order so that I have to do less thinking on the fly. Now, the other thing I wanna do over here is let's talk really quickly about adding stereo pairs. So we have these mono tracks, let's click apply and okay. Now, if we look over here, you can see that we have all of our different input names, our custom names, and our names as reported by the driver. But if I head to my stereo track, you'll notice that I only have available mono inputs to choose from. So what happens if I was recording stereo into my ADL 600, which was using my mic line five and six inputs on the Quantum? Well, let's go ahead and set something up. So I mentioned we have mono and stereo, and I also mentioned that a mono will show up as an M, and a stereo will show up as left, right. Now, another thing you'll notice here is that the minute I added this track, it named it input three. That's because Studio One always looks to name things numerically, and I've given a custom name to input three, input four, input five, and input six. So if I add new channels, mono or stereo, it will automatically name them numerically. So it named this one input three. If I add three more, you'll see input four, input five, and input six. Now the next thing we need to do is quite simply, we need to map these out. So this one is currently mapped out to one, two, and then this one, I want to map out to three, four. This one, I want to map out to five and six. We'll just click that and it maps them both. Now also these names, input three, four, five, and six, they're not really making too much sense for me right now. So what I might consider doing is renaming these as well. So instead of input three, let's name this input one slash two. I'm going to click tab and here, let's name this three slash four. I'm going to click tab again this one, this is our ADL 600 pair, so we can go ahead and we can just rename this ADL 600, and I guess we can say stereo. And then input six, we're going to name this input seven forward slash eight. Now, once again, we see this is in gray, and these are in this light, dull blue. Let's go ahead and click apply. Now we see that they're bright and active. Now, if we go into our stereo track over here, we have our input one, two, three, four, ADL 600 stereo and input seven and eight. And as I mentioned, at any given point in time, we can always see what's being reported by the driver on the right with our custom names on the left. Now to keep things simple, if this setup works for me and I've done a lot of custom naming, we can go ahead, click the make default option 
and then any song that we open up henceforth will automatically inherit or open up with this audio I.O. setup. And then we only have to really do this work once in terms of setting things up, click make default, and then we don't have to worry about it anymore. Now, just as a quick note, we don't necessarily have to use all of the inputs that are available or the outputs. So for example, I don't tend to use the SPDIF or the ADAT outs that much. So if I didn't need them, I could simply select them all over here, click remove, click apply, click OK. Now, if we click over here, you'll notice that we only have the outputs available that I need. Thank you.